Good morning guys, <coughs> Anjani Kumar here dealing instrumentation subject for a final year electrical students. Till now uh, we successfully completed our first unit syllabus called measuring system. Right? So in this session I am going to give brief analysis that what uh, we did till now. Right? I am requesting you all students definitely you should follow my videos so with that you will get uh, some brief uh, knowledge about uh, instrumentation subject right so we discussed about first topic so measuring system so what is a measuring system we discussed clearly measuring system so what is a measuring system right first uh, we discussed about a definition of a measurement so measurement means unknown quantity which is compared to the standard quantity and the result expressed in terms of standard quantity correct so if you want to measure something you require an instrument so measure measurement plus instrument uh, we can call it as a measuring system right so there there are different types of instrument uh, we discussed each and every instrument right there are uh, based on a methodology there are two types of instruments absolute instruments secondary instrument so what is the absolute instrument depends on physical constants of that instrument. For suppose if you want to find out the power, you just conduct a test to find out the voltage, conduct a test to find out the current, then you have a formula P is equal to V into I, substitute all the values in that formula, you will get the result. So these are the process we have to maintain with the help of absolute instruments. Said so these are more accurate instruments. We'll research elaborately. So, what are the absolute instruments we discussed? It. So, other next secondary instruments. Secondary instruments means the parameters under the measurements itself. At the time of measurements, you'll get the result. No need to go for a conduct testing and all these things. Right? Uh, those are uh, ammeter, voltmeter, power factor meter, frequency meter, watt meter. These are right based on. Uh, principle of operation again secondary instruments are classified in different types so those are um, pointer type instruments null type instruments pointer type instruments means when pointer starts moving from zero to required position so when the pointer stops that will my output null type instruments is nothing but a bridge balance instruments right when the bridge is balanced the null type reading zero so that that's my unknown quantity we discussed about all those um, instruments after that analog instruments is there digital instruments there is there based on application portable instruments is there right based on uh, principles uh, pmmc moving coil instruments moving iron instrument dynamometer type instruments so right? these are different categories of instruments all right and again uh, recording type instruments instantaneous instrument indicating type instruments that is nothing but instantaneous values that we can measure after that uh, recording type instrument which records the present value and the past value also integrated instruments over a period of time sum of total power that can be consumed like like energy meter ampere hour meter these are integrating type instruments that we discussed uh, each and every instrument uh, in detail right after that uh, we come into the characteristics of instrument right each and every instrument that it has two characteristics so what are the characteristics there are static characteristic and dynamic characteristics so static characteristics means these these instruments doesn't change with the time doesn't depends on a time so dynamic characteristics means these instrument it depends on a time based on time the instrument uh, function will vary so in that static characteristics, very very important question, what is the static characteristics, what is the dynamic characteristics of an instrument, right? In that static characteristics, there are two types of static characteristics, static characteristics. Those are desirable static characteristics, undesirable static characteristics. So desirable means definitely you require these type of characteristics in an instrument. And these are means we don't want uh, these type of characteristics in that instrument. If it present, the instrument will get an error value, some loss of reading also will get. So what are the desirable characteristics? Those are accuracy, precision, resolution, linearity, 
sensitivity, repeatability, reproducibility, spam or range. Right? These are uh, desirable characteristics. I'll, I'll clearly explain all this uh, information with clear examples also. So if any person missed that one, you just go through my last videos. Definitely you will get all the characteristics in detail. No doubt about that. Right? So what is meant by accuracy? The degree of closeness to the measured value, to the true value, we can call it as an accuracy. So what is a measure? If you want to find uh, 5 volts, 5 volts, that is a measured value. Right? You have an instrument. You apply that instrument. You will get the result as 4 volts. So that is a measured value. So how much closeness from measured value to the true value? So that, that will denote the accuracy of the system. After that, what is the precision? Precision means consistency in the uh, readings right but suppose if you want to measure 5 volts you're getting the each and every time you are getting 2 volts 2 volts 2 volts that is nothing but a consistency in the result output so that is called more precise instrument all right and some other instrument will read so 4 4.1 4.3 4.5 .4 all these things so these are less less precise instrument all right we did one note also it's very very important note and after that uh, a resolution so what is a meant by resolution the smallest change in the instrument that we can detect so that is called more resoluted instrument how you can find out the resolution means we require number of divisions you know the full scale how many number of divisions right so with that what is the resolution of the instrument you can easily find out the full scale by number of divisions so each and every division you know the reading so right, when a scale stops there, you can easily predict that uh, reading also. So smallest change also we can detect. After that linearity, linearity means output, linear relationship with the input. So output linearly varies with the input. So that exhibits a linearity. If the scale is linear means it, it gives a uniform scale. So we can easily predict the unknown magnitude value, right? If it is non-linearity, so you, you won't directly get the uh, unknown quantity. Very high, that non-uniform scale. So how much percentage of non-linearity also the maximum deviation by total number of full scale readings with that you can calculate the percentage of non-linearity also. I definitely will get a question. So they will give examples, find out the percentage of non-linearity or how much linearity present in this instrument, they will ask it. So we solve one examples also with that what is meant by spam and range. A range is nothing but the maximum maximum value we can call it as a spam full scale value we can call it as a range what is a spam means minimum minus maximum value so we can call it as a spam all right after that repeatability reproducibility so repeatability means one experiment one person same climatic condition different times same input will get the same result right one person to one instrument on a same condition different times with the same input you'll get the same result that is called repeatability what is meant by reproducibility different person different in instruments and different places all right with the same input they are getting same results that is called a reproducibility right so that is about repeatability and reproducibility so these are the desirable characteristics so definitely so we expect uh, these type of characteristics in the instrument itself right after that undesirable characteristics so you won't expect these type of characteristics in the instruments so if uh, these type of characteristics present in the instrument definitely the instrument may reach uh, uh, some error value or else instrument may get damaged right what are the undesirable characteristics those are hysteresis right a drift spam all these things these are undesirable, undesirable characteristics so what is meant by drift? hysteresis hysteresis means from increasing order you will get to one type of output but suppose if you want to measure there is a full scale of full scale of 30 volts you started the readings 0 10 15 20 25 30 you will get the outputs right increasing order you will get one type of outputs Decreasing orders, you will get the different type of outputs. Directly you go for 25, you will get a result which is uh, different from the above result. That means increasing order, one type of result you will get. Decreasing order, different type of results we get. These type of characteristics. 
so we can call it as a hysteresis characteristics you won't expect these type of characteristics that means the three instrument uh, red cells rates are different values it's it's nothing but error analysis error error is it's, it's nothing but error after that uh, drift drift is nothing but deviation from from output to input so we can call it as a drift there are different types of drift we discussed all these things zero drift span drift all right uh, zonal drift so these are three uh, drift here drift is nothing but uh, your point uh, doesn't start from zero itself if there is any mistakes happen in the instrument your point your 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 point will be broken from zero so you have to adjust uh, the pointer starts from zero itself then only you'll get uh, zero drift zero drift means throughout the drift throughout analysis the deviation is a constant value red spam drift means linearly varies zonal drift meant particular sometime the drift is present after that there is no drift so these are undesirable characteristics that are present in the uh, instrument so these are the static characteristics right what are the dynamic characteristics so dynamic characteristic means these are the characteristics uh, these are the instrument uh, change with the time right change with the time that's uh, what are the dynamic characteristics speed of response fidelity dynamic error so these are the dynamic characters you don't have that much uh, concept on these uh, dynamic characteristics speed of response means how much faster the instrument will reach the uh, reach the thing so that is called as speed of response right what is the fidelity fidelity means you are giving speed very speed but uh, the result must be accurate if you if there are a 10% 10% is there if you ask any question definitely they'll give the answer very fast but that should be accurate so that is called a fidelity fast is not that important but the accuracy accuracy is important correct so what is the dynamic error the error that are uh, that are developed under a dynamic condition so we can call it as a dynamic error right uh, these are the static and uh, dynamic characteristics of an instrument right so after that uh, we started error analysis right so what is meant by error so there are static error is there so that we can call it as absolute error so it can be denoted by delta value all right so what is meant by error error means a devi difference between a measured value and a true value we can call it as an error so if it is delta a am minus et so am mean cause measured value et is nothing but a true value if measured value greater than the true value your error is a positive error right you should you should apply a negative coefficient to reduce the error so definitely if you you require a perfect instrument means somewhat uh, less errors are going to be present in the system right if am error means am minus et if uh, am greater than et that is called a positive error if et greater than error greater than am that means am less than et so that is called a negative error you require a positive coefficient to reduce the error after that we discussed about um, and percentage error so percentage error means am minus et by et into 100 we can call it as a percentage error it can be denoted by epsilon right after that uh, if you remove the percentage that is called a fractional error so what is a fractional error am minus et by et so that is called a fractional error right if the percentage error defined by the manufacturer itself so that we can call it as a relative error right if a percentage error defined by the user itself so that is called a limiting error a percentage of limiting error so that that which is a most important error it's a defined by the user itself so that is called a percentage of limiting error so what is the formula for percentage of limiting error am minus et by et into 100 so this is one type of formula if you know the app am minus et we can call it as an absolute error right so that's percentage of limiting error is equal to absolute error by true value so if you know the percentage error a percentage limiting error you can easily predict the absolute error if you know the absolute error you can easily predict the percentage limiting error and different formulas uh, we discussed for a percentage limiting error full scale by true value into percentage of accuracy at full scale you know that accuracy that can be specified full scale value or else accuracy percentage accuracy that we can specify for some value so it's a true value so whatever it may be right 
so with that uh, there are different uh, different types of formulas for percentage limiting error that we clearly discussed about all these things and we did some formulas also right so these the, those are about uh, uh, mathematical error analysis and else there are the theoretical errors are going to be present in the system so what are the theoretical er theoretical errors there are those are gross errors right random systematic errors random errors right so gross errors means due to human mistakes uh, the error will be present like by taking the uh, observing the readings uh, if it's if it's false definitely the output will be change right any experience user are present in the system right what type of instrument that you have to take for that measurement and that also reads value if you know that uh, what type of instrument you have to measure but suppose if you want to measure 10 volts if you take uh, 100 volts meter definitely that will reads an error 0 to 100 volts meter this now for 10 volts measurements so definitely it will reads an error you know the percentage limiting error varies right after that uh, systematic errors so there are three types of systematic errors those are instrumental error observational error and environmental error so what are the instrumental instrumental error means uh, low quality materials used in the instrument substandard materials used in the instrument so that uh, instrument will reach an error so those type of errors we can call as an instrumental error percentage limiting error loading effect which is very very important concept that we discussed with an example also right guaranteed accuracy error uh, spring tension irregular spring tension aging effect these are instrumental error after that uh, what you called uh, uh, environmental error so due to the humidity temperature variation stray magnetic field uh, right electrostatic field uh, the, uh, the instrument will reach uh, an error so these type of errors we can call it as a uh, environmental error after that observational error so by seeing by seeing uh, measurement also you'll read you, you'll get some error right so you know the each and every instrument that are going to be covered by the covered by the um, glasses glass fitting so always you have to take the reading you should make a perpendicular to the point then only you'll take the reading then only it will reach a uh, uh, perfect accurate value if you read uh, left side of uh, left left side you'll get some result if you read uh, if you take the reading from the right side you'll get uh, other results so you have to take and care while taking the reading you should perpendicular to the pointer itself then only you'll get the uh, accurate results so those that type of errors we can call it as an observational errors right after that random errors random errors means very normal error you don't have any reason for these type of errors you just need to eliminate but in some other cases we don't want to eliminate these type of errors so we should reduce this error so how you can reduce this error with the help of statistical analysis of random errors we clearly discussed about the statistical analysis of random errors so what are the statistical analysis right uh, so mean arithmetic mean deviation standard mean of deviation variance right so probable weight probable probable error all these things these are the formulas that uh, each and every point we discussed clearly if, uh, if any person missed that one you should go through my uh, last lessons definitely will get uh, information about information of these uh, statistical analysis of random errors all right so after that uh, you enter into we entered into the signals all right so what is a signal signal is nothing but which some quantity which carry the information for a long distance whatever it may be it can carry the information it uh, depends on a time value right now what are the different types of a signal so first we discussed about uh, standard test signals standard test signals that means these are the signals that are easily available in the laboratory so if you want to predict any system response we require these type of signals right we can easily generate the signals you just apply to the system you will get the result right that means uh, step in step unit step uh, ram signal unit ram signal right parabolic signal unit parabolic signal impulse signal right each and every signal we discussed uh, with neat sketch and mathematical formulas also right and uh, we discussed about the integral of step signal is a ram signal integral of ram signal is a parabolic signal if you make the differentiation also you will get uh, some notation which is very very important notion notation that we discussed in the law in, in in your class right 
after that uh, we enter in, we enter into the modulation concept all right so what is a modulation modulation means a low frequency signal we can't uh, transfer for a lot long distance for this we require a high frequency component so high frequency component can be matched with the low frequency component in order to uh, in order to transfer the signal for a long distances so this matching from high frequency to low frequency we can call it as a modulation but suppose one paper is there paper is a less weighted person less weighted so you can't uh, throw that paper for a long distance right so when you match uh, stone you have a stone which is having high frequency when you match uh, this paper with the stone so this matching we can call it as a modulation if you throw definitely the paper will moves for a long distance so that that is called a modulation process right so what is the need of modulation means antenna required tower required uh, noise disturbance disturbance rejection re rejection right for a long distance travel traveling of a signal which is of the need of a modulation right after that uh, we studied about different types of modulations right so we have a um, continuous type and pulse modulation type Continu continuous type means your carrier wave in a continuous form all right uh, pulse pulse type means your carrier wave is in a pulse form all right so continuous type which is having a different types amplitude modulation amplitude modulation frequency modulation and phase modulation right pulse modulation which is having a digital by model pulse code modulation pulse amplitude modulation pulse width modulation pulse time modulation these are the different categories <coughs> These are the different categories of uh, modulation. So we, we each and every, what, what is the continuous uh, modulation we discussed. Each and every concept uh, with uh, neat examples. So what is amplitude modulation means your carrier wave amplitude will change according to the message signals, that uh, continuous signal. All right. For frequency modulation, your frequency of a carrier wave will change. Your, your message signal won't change because your message signal need to transfer for a long distance right definitely you should vary your carry according to that um, your according to that modulation your carrier wave will change if it is amplitude modulation it means your carrier wave amplitude will change all right frequency modulation means your your uh, carrier wave frequency will change according to that uh, operation according to the shape of a uh, message signal right phase of uh, carrier wave with carrier wave will change according to the shape of this so we each and everything we neatly clearly explain with neat examples also <coughs> neat sketches also so you just follow definitely you will get uh, uh, definitely you will get the information of uh, instrumentation subject how it is uh, very easy all right definitely some of the people thinking that uh, so instrumentation subject is very difficult there no doubt about that the instrumentation is very easy so definitely you should follow the videos right then only you'll have a good knowledge on this subject right after that we entered into the concept of pulse code modulation so big pulse code modulation means it converts analog analog signal into digital signal Right, uh, before going to the uh, pulse code modulation we discussed about uh, samples and sampling theorem so what is a sample samples means continuous signal which is converted to the discrete signal so that is called a samples what is a sampling theorem sampling theorem states that definitely the continuous signal which is converted to the discrete signal but again we retrieve back your continuous signal with the help of this discrete signal so with some condition so what is that condition efs uh, is greater than or equal to 2 fm so what is fs fs is nothing but sampling frequency fm is nothing but uh, maximum value of a message signal all right so the condition which satisfied definitely continuous ninja discrete of study but with the help of sampling theorem you can retrieve your continuous signal from the discrete nature right so that is that's the, that is a statement of a sampling theorem right uh, we don't have uh, that much concept of a sampling theorem how we discussed uh, what is a theorem or what is a samples after that we we discussed how the how the samples are generated from a continuous wave right you have a continuous signal or a message signal so in order to generate the samples we require a train of pulses so which is having a time period ts 
and the sampling frequency of s we just multiply the continuous signal with the train of pulses only will generate your samples by outer sketching you will get your continuous signal so in order to draw the outer sketch you need to satisfy one condition so what is that condition f s greater than or equal to 2 fm so that is called a sampling theorem so that we discussed clearly so if you have any doubts go through that uh, definitely you will understand what um, what is a sampling theorem what is a samples and all these things after that you entered into the pulse code modulation so what is a pulse code modulation pulse code modulation means it converts analog signal into digital form right for this we require three parts so what are the parts samples quantization and encoder right a first block is a samples what is the purpose of a sample whatever the input analog signal so when enter into the sampler which convert into the discrete form so discrete form which is having infinity samples so each and every samples which is having which is having a magnitude of uh, between 0 to whatever the maximum value you have infinite uh, samples right which is having different different uh, magnitudes right then it will moves to the quantizer so what is the purpose of a quantizer a quantizer will fix the samples magnitude right each and every discrete value each and every samples that it has some magnitude value i don't know how much magnitude it is but the quantizer will fix that magnitude right after that it will goes to after that that discrete signal with fixed magnitude enter into the encoder encoder will conform the digital form so whatever the thing quantizer if you want to work the quantizer it depends on encoder so encoder will tells how many digits how many digital form we need to convert so if n is equal to 2 means you are in continuous signal which is converted to two digital form that 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 means one two digit two digit form they are zero and one if it is three three, three digit form 00001010 that that's the digital form if any n value specified by the encoder then quantizer will check so what is the n then how quantizer will work means it uh, maintain the quantization circles quantization levels so what how many quantization levels means it depends on two power n so n is equal to 2 means <coughs> 2 square that is a four quantization level you have to specify right so with the help of you have to draw the four quantization levels so each and every point uh, in a samples the quantization will give the fixed value per suppose the value is 1.3 so quantization level is 1 so you have to make that uh, what is the nearest quantization level for that magnitude you have to specify so 1.3 can be removed and it will place as a 1 is the nearest quantization level if it is 4.9 5 is a quantization level na you have to make it as a fixed value 5 if it is 6.9 right quantization level is 7 so nearest value nt is 7 so you have to fix that value 7 so with this uh, you have a four quantization level the encoder will the encoder will tells that uh, two two digit form two digit form means zero so g- with zero and one how many configurations will get 0 0 0 1 1011 these four are the four quantization level so at any point you have a at a, at, every, at every point you have a quantization level from that you can retrieve your digital form right i clearly explained with uh, neat sketches about uh, Uh, what is the pulse code modulation and all these things right definitely you should follow it is very very important question <coughs> it's very very important question right after that uh, we discussed about uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of a quant uh, advantages and disadvantages of a pulse code modulation definitely the quantization plays a predominant role in a pulse code modulation technique right what is advantage is uh, definitely it can store the information for a, for, for a particular period of time you can store that information with the help of pcm it's convert analog to digital value noise is going to be reduced because lots of steps is going to be done uh, definitely the loss uh, losses that are going to be eliminated right and uh, somewhat disadvantages are also there so what are the disadvantages if n is equal to 2 definitely the four levels that means four quantization levels you have to draw If n is equal to three means you have to draw eight quantization levels. If n is equal to four means a sixteen quantization level. If n is equal to five means two power five quantization levels. Right? Uh, it's very difficult to draw the um, that much quantization levels in order to calculate the analog form into digital form. So each and every quantization level that it has some digital value. 
correct but suppose n is equal to it means each and every quantization level that it has 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 1 1 0 0 1 0 1 1 1 0 triple 1 so all the quantization level that it has some digital value you should make the point on that will retrieve the data right and after that uh, it's very complex form the time consuming process in order to get the result it's a time consuming process so that's why we have a digital world meters so we discussed in our third unit i think um, very very important uh, so these are the things that uh, we covered uh, till now all this information so i hope uh, it's clear from my side if uh, you people have any doubts regarding these sessions you just feel free to contact me about my subject called instrumentation right uh, i hope uh, definitely you should follow right uh, i'm requesting you to follow the follow my videos and uh, like my videos mm? uh, i'm uploading my materials uh, regarding first unit also with this video itself uh, stay home stay safe mm, thank you very much guys thank you very much